Hey guys, welcome to my channel Electronics Video. Today in this video, I am going to discuss about FIFO design. So before that, we should understand the basics of the FIFO. So I am going to split this FIFO design topic into uh, three different uh, you know sections. One is basically, you know, first we will go through all of the basics of the FIFO, and then we'll go ahead and you know understand. I mean, uh, understand and how do we design the synchronous FIFO, and then the uh, in the later we'll uh, you know design the asynchronous FIFO. But before uh, you know designing, uh, go ahead, I mean before we go ahead and design the uh, FIFOs, we need to understand its basics. So <coughs> for let's under in this video, I'm going to explain about uh, you know this album. I'm going to cover these topics. So what is really a FIFO is and why do we need it? And then we'll see what you, what are the different types of the FIFOs. And uh, um, if you, you if you have heard this name grey code, why do we use it and what is its importance? And then uh, understanding of the FIFOs, like you know how the FIFO works, what are the right pointers, what are the read pointers, and how do we calculate those pointers? All of those things we'll understand this in the FIFO basics. So. Uh, so please do watch this video till the end so that you understand the you get a clear picture of why do we need all of these uh, you know FIFOs and how do we calculate the you know uh, pointers and all so please watch the video till the end so that you get a clear picture and in the next videos uh, for the synchronous and asynchronous FIFOs so these concepts will be necessary and also make sure you subscribe the um, subscribe to channel and hit the bell icon so that you receive the, all the further updates so let's get started so what is FIFO <coughs> So FIFO stands for the first in first out. Okay, so that means first in first out. So now uh, assume you have a, this is my FIFO. Okay, so I have a, some uh, n locations. Okay, so now what happens? This is my zero first two three four five six. Okay, so now what happens when somebody writes into this right? So it first pushes here okay it becomes zero and then when this next first right comes it pushes here and then it pushes it comes down like this okay that means it's going to be zero one two three four five six okay so these are my location the first data whatever that will be pushed so it will come to the zeroth location okay and the second data will be returned to the first location, second location like that. Now when you are trying to read it out, so this is the first data that goes out. Okay, so that means whatever the first data that you are pushing in, so that is the first data that will go out of this, you know, uh, uh, FIFO. So that's why we call it as a uh, FIFO and uh, this is a write operation and the, the re, uh, so what we call it is push and pop. Okay, so the, you know, the, uh, process of writing to the FIFO is called push and the process of you know reading out the data from the FIFO is called pop. So we are going to push it and then we are going to pop it out. So uh, why do we need it? The, that's the most important. So uh, if you know the CDC right like the basics of the you know uh, single bit uh, signals like you know it could be a uh, level signals or it could be a pulse signals. So we have handled the CDC in a different way. So now when it comes to multi-bit signals right the multi-bit data signals assume you have a uh, you know a set of data like uh, um, uh, which is coming from some of the you know um, some interface okay so probably take an example of the AXI interface so now AXI interface it sends out the bursts of data okay so that means when you want to handle the data right like it's a multi-bit data so which can be you know continuously toggling okay so it's not necessary that from one bus to the next uh, so one beat of the bus right so that can be different to the previous beat okay so it's like beats of data in the bus right so each beat of the data can be completely different so when you want to transfer those such you know uh, uh, data from one domain to another domain right so that time what happens you will need to in, uh, you know account for the cdc so that's the reason why where the you know uh, the fifo comes into picture so it's not that always um, um, it's uh, only the cdc but it's also that um, uh, the we are not worried only uh, talking about the uh, you know clocks and all but it's also that sometimes what happens um, take example um, now uh, you have uh, this uh, push okay the right operation so now what happens 
the right is happening the, assume the right and read both are working on the same clocks it's not all, always that it's a two different clocks but it's possible that they are on the same clock now what happens you are trying to write into the data but the read uh, assume now you have written uh, six uh, or maybe five uh, beats okay five bits or the five locations you have written now uh, uh, so this five locations uh, right happens continuously from the right side but the read side what happens it is possible that it cannot it may be may not be you know considering this uh, reading out the data at the same interval okay it is possible that it can read out once in uh, five clock cycles one by five okay so in that case what happens uh, once in a five clock cycles means um, so you already have some, you need some place where you need can store the this data right because it's uh, the read side is it's not reading out so frequently okay because of there is some constraint on the read side okay it cannot read out so fast and all something okay but the clock frequency is same okay so in such cases you need to store the data so that's why we need we will we need this FIFOs so coming to the second topic right so the second aspect this is the which what are the different types of the FIFO so first is as, as you know um, the first one is the synchronous FIFO so synchronous FIFO means as I explained just now so synchronous in meaning um, uh, the right clock and the read clock both are running on the same uh, frequency but the only reason why do we need the FIFO is that the read operation or a write operation right so it may not be at the same interval so it can be of two different intervals so that's the reason we need a, a synchronous FIFO now coming to the second uh, point this is okay so this is my um, okay let me just drop write it down so here we have synchronous and then we have asynchronous okay so uh, the sync uh, synchronous we already uh, understood now why do we need asynchronous so if the two clocks the right and the read domain clocks are completely different okay so that time it is possible that the data that you are going to sample from the sender sender means in uh, the right domain can be you know uh, get corrupted in the destination domain that's a read domain because the data is changing and uh, the sampling frequency is different so the your destination can go into metastable state and and that is highly possible because we have a multiple bits of data so if it was just a one bit right so now if it is zero, uh, zero signal right single bit signal which is going from here to like this, something like this okay so now if you are sampling this here uh, in the destination domain you, this can go into the metastable state over here okay but in the immediate one or two clock cycles uh, after if we have the synchronizers then we uh, ensure that that you know uh, we will come out of this metastable condition because uh, that uh, you know because of the synchronization present so uh, in the second or the third clock cycle it can recover but when we have a uh, multiple bits right so it's possible that each bit is struggling okay it is not necessary that uh, you know we might get uh, proper data after synchronization so we people ask like you know why do we uh, cannot synchronize the you know multiple bits in uh, like you know two stage or three stage so the reason is now assume uh, you have a uh, signals right like uh, um, something 0 1 1 okay now uh, this 0 1 1 so when we want to sample this in the destination domain so what happen what possibly can happen is this can get corrupted and it can become one this can get corrupted it can become one this also can get corrupted and this can also become one because of my meta stability conditions i don't have a synchronizer so all of this possibly can be get corrupted or maybe it can go into metastable state and then they can become something like this so i sampled a wrong value so that means my original data is this and my sample data is this that means all of the bits are toggled so i cannot ensure that the data i mean with the help of a two stage synchronizer i cannot guarantee that uh, i am just sampling the uh, the proper data so see now what happens is it's possible that it, we can sample that it's not necessary that we can we always do we will get the wrong data it is possible that uh, two bits can be are synchronized properly but one one bit right so this is my bit so that went wrong over here okay 
or it's uh, all of the bits okay so that is all of uh, per, you know uh, permutation combinations of this you know uh, signals can get corrupted so that's the reason why we have why do we need a, a synchronous fifo now uh, coming to the gray code so uh, so gray code is um, you know um, it's a technique where you know the when we compare it to the binary codes right so binary code can change from you know any any number of bits which so is a random but when it comes to gray code the difference between the one i mean uh, one number to the next number okay so incremental next number binary number so it will have only one say uh, one bit change so now let me uh, just uh, write it uh, write the binary code okay this is my b2 this is my b1 and this is my b0 okay so this is 0 0 0 Okay, so now, so you know how to convert the binary to the gray. So my all of these MSP bits will be the same as the, the binary, the G2. So that means it's a four times zeros. So now what happens in order to get the bit one of the gray code, what we will do? We are going to XOR this B2 and B1. So that means it's a zero. This is 0, this is 1, 1, 1, 1, then 0, and then 0. And to get the G0, we will XOR these two. Okay, so that means it's again 0, this is 1, this is 1, then 0, 0, this is 1, and this is 1, and then 0. Okay, now what happens if you see? Uh, here to here right um, maybe yeah I'll take example yeah this case take example of this case okay how my data is changing here from one binary number to the next binary number so my data is toggling okay so this is 0 1 1 it became next value is this is a 3 right and this is my 4 decimal value of equivalent of this so when it is changing from 3 to 4 what's happening um, my B0 has changed from 1 to 0, B1 has changed from 1 to 0 and B2 has changed from 0 to 1. So all the three bits have changed over here. Okay. So when you try to sample such signal in the you know uh, destination, in the, uh, I mean uh, take care of the CDC, you can end up in a metastable uh, state. So the po possibility of ending up in a metastability uh, states are you know, higher. Whereas if you consider this gray code, what happens? So basically. Here you see there is only one bit change, 0 to 1. The rest bits are same. Now consider from here to here. So if you see 0, 0, 1 and this is 0, 1, 1. So this only this bit has changed. So this bit has uh, it's remained a constant. And then if you see this here to here, so only this bit is changing, but whereas these two bits are same. So it's always from one number one uh, uh, binary number to the next binary number, right? So it's always the one bit change that occurs so that's the reason why we use the you know uh, uh, gray codes in the you know for taking care of the cdc's now uh, this is also uh, you know very in the common uh, you know industrial standard uh, uh, number number system where you know in electronics communications and all right so when you are transferring the uh, you know uh, uh, you know signals so that way that there we need this you know gray code so that it reduces the you know noise and all so this is a you know standard uh, binary sorry this is a standard number system which will be used and now so i hope this gray code why do we use the gray code it's understood i'll come to uh, the, you know uh, why do we need this in the while designing the fifos i'll explain that maybe in the for in the next video or uh, Maybe in the like yeah in the next video not I'll explain. So why do we need next one is understanding of this five force. Okay, uh, let me first write down some of the important aspects of this five four. Okay. So five four. So what happened? So for the five four we have something called uh, right pointer WPTR I call it as, and then we have a. Uh, read pointer RPTR 
then some terminology is called full and then empty okay so now this is my FIFO Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. These are the locations of the FIFO. Okay. Uh, so uh, I'm not going to explain how to calculate the depth of the FIFO here in this video, at least. Uh, maybe I can cover that in the upcoming videos. But here, assuming that uh, you have the depth already known, so now what we'll do is, um, okay. So whenever you write. To the FIFO, so the first location, so by default, the right pointer, right pointer is nothing but the the location where you are going to write the data. Okay, so that's a right pointer, and the read pointer is the location from where you are going to read the data. Okay, so that's a read pointer. So um, when the as, okay after the reset, the right pointer and read pointer will be always starting with a zero. Okay, so this is the place where from where the right uh, they will get reset and they will start from the location zero. Now, what happens? Uh, assume um, you are continuously writing from the right domain. Okay, so you are trying to write to the data. So now, first you wrote here and then you wrote it over here, here and then second location, third location, fourth, and you come to here the seventh location. Okay, so you return to here already. So now, so what is now the state of the FIFO? How do we say that the FIFO is now full? Okay, so now what happens is um, since my right pointer is has reached 7, okay, and the read pointer is at still 0, so I have occupied all of the my FIFO entries. So we can say it as a FIFO is full, okay, by you know visual uh, you know look, right? So you can say that my FIFO is, is full. So now what happens? The FIFO doesn't understand or there is no mechanism now if i want see always the fifo pointer it's it's a always it, it's kind of a rollover mechanism so once it reaches the full value okay zero zero seven right that means um one 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 so when i add a one to it what becomes it becomes zero right it becomes zero so and then this is the MSB bit. Okay, so it's something like it happens. Uh, it, it, this uh, this will happen. So now the next location will be. It will come over here and it will roll over and it becomes here. So now my right pointer again has come come back rolled over and it has come back to zero. So that means my right pointer and read pointer are still again the same. So that means what happens? We from this statement will get will under will be something like you know uh, will be confused or will get uh, kind of uh, you know the question in our mind whether my FIFO is full or my FIFO is empty because right pointer and read pointer are pointing to the same location. Okay, so that means uh, we kind of have a, some kind of a uh, dilemma state here whether the uh, the FIFO is full or not. So the full condition for empty right so when i say empty so that means whatever that you have written to the fifo okay so that means uh, the first location i wrote and if i read out the first location that means my i read out okay so that means there are no more entries in the fifo okay so that means when you write a two or a three uh, writes into the fifo and then if you are reading the equivalent um, uh, amount of data from the fifo that means my fifo is empty okay so if my right pointer if it is equals to the read pointer okay so that means my FIFO is empty okay this is the condition okay that's for the uh, empty condition that means um, now every time you write to the FIFO my right pointer increments every time you read from the FIFO you your right uh, read pointer increments so that means whenever they are equal so that means it's an empty condition but when it comes to this condition right it has written all this you know eight uh, uh, memory locations again it has rolled over okay so that time we will have a problem because my write pointer and read pointer are equal but it's not actually the uh, empty condition but it's it has to indicate the full condition now how do we take care of this is by taking care of uh, by adding the one additional address bit address bits 
will be plus 1. So that means what we will do is, I'll just put that here. So yeah, this was the better approach. Okay. Okay. So now, um, here in order to represent my eight uh, memory locations, how many bits of address I need? Address required. This is a address we need is three bits, right? I can cover all my eight locations. Now, what we will do is we will call it as a this address pointers or we call we're going to call it as a right pointers. Okay. So my right pointer, I will add it three plus one is equal to 4 bits okay and similar the rate pointer will be always a so again the 4 bits okay so now so now what I'm going to do is so if you see that example right the uh, the example I just tried to 111 it has reached when I want to write the next data my write enable comes in so that time what I'm going to do I'm going to write to the next location that next location is the incremental address so that means it became 0 0 0 and then my one over here okay this is my next right pointer however what i'm going to do is i'm going to write to only this location okay zeroth location but i will have a this additional information that's a right pointer now what i'm going to do is if you see my actual read pointer is still a zero so that means it's zero 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 and this bit is also zero because it has not rolled over okay so with this right what we'll do is we are going to compare these two and then these two okay so for the full condition okay what we'll do if my not of right pointer bit number this is a 0 1 2 3 right so this bit number 3 and then my remaining bits of the right pointer which is nothing but the 2 down to 0 it should be equal to the read pointer of 3 down to 0 so that means what I am trying to do is this is my read pointer 0 1 2 3 all of these bits should be equal to the negated version of this right pointer third bit so that means what i'm going to do i'm going to flip this so that means it became zero if this condition satisfies that means my fifo is full but for us read uh, fifo empty condition what we are going to do is we are going to make this as the uh, here I don't have to worry about the additional bit because if my right pointer and read pointer are exactly same so that means my right pointer of 3 down to 0 if it equals to a read pointer of 3 down to 0 okay if this condition satisfied this is my empty condition okay so now uh, what happens if my right pointer has rolled over my it becomes uh, th this will happen okay if my read pointer also rolls over and then this also becomes one okay so that time it's a again empty condition but if there is a difference uh, in the right pointer right the right pointer is over uh, you know uh, or uh, you know it's a uh, rolling over and then it is setting it to one that time we will have this full condition set so now based upon this right full uh, full condition and the empty condition we are going to you know um, you know get off the right enable and a read enable see the condition is like if the fifo is empty then you cannot read from it right because there is no data present so that time what we will do is we will not say that the when the fifo is empty we will indicate to the uh, read domain okay read meaning uh, the whatever the the downstream logic we will indicate the FIFO is empty so don't do not try to read for anything there from the FIFO okay and if the on the right domain okay if the what we'll do is if the FIFO is already full right like if it has you know uh, uh, written to all the locations then we will indicate a full condition to the right domain saying that do not write to the FIFO because already my FIFO memory is full okay 
so this is the indication to the right domain so these two things based upon this full and the FIFO empty conditions and also based upon the clock domains right like you know um, whether it is a synchronous or asynchronous we will be designing the synchronous FIFO and the asynchronous FIFO I hope all of this information is clear if you have any questions related to this you know basics of the FIFO please do let me know in the comment section I'll be happy to help and uh, please uh, you know keep uh, you know um, you know asking for the questions about this you know all of the any, if any query if I have right like please do ask all those questions so I'll be you know answering this in uh, like you know within a few couple of hours and uh, I'll be coming up with the synchronous FIFO in my next video and then followed by the asynchronous FIFO yeah thank you